Okay, we have my fourth and final piece of uh, the Friday night live stream. Um, what are deep, saturated, colored background sky images? And uh, this one is the square piece, which I hardly ever work in that type of format. But I need to do that more often because I really like the look of it. But... On this piece here, as far as the finishing types of touches, we're not going to do anything too much. I've been thinking about it and I thought, I want to do something, kind of bring something different to it. But I really like the, I don't know, I guess the spirit of this piece just as is. I, I thought about placing um, a figure in here, you know, because it looks like a perfect place for a little spotlit area. And I mean, it looked pretty cool to put um, someone in here or an animal or something like that. But I thought I'm just gonna leave it like that. I, I think I'm gonna bring, um, I really like these small eagles um, right here. So I'm going to put them like right up here, kind of, uh, you know, nah, not, they're not spiraling around the moon, but um, kind of dancing in the moonlight, you know, you might say. Okay, so one of the things I wanna do is I wanna, increase the textural range of this piece. Okay, now, I use white pigment ink all the time in my pieces um, to finish things off. If you do that, you have to retain some of the white of the paper or have white elements in there. Otherwise, the white um, pigment ink doesn't really make sense as far as um, an element within the lighting scheme of a piece, okay? So, in this case, um, we have white around the clouds and the moon. You don't have to have a huge amount of it. I mean, there's a little bit of light area down here, but it's not really white, okay? Uh, that would be okay. You can utilize that if I wanted to put some fog or something like that around in there. But um, just remember, you know, that um, white retention for use with white pigment ink, because the white pigment ink represents moisture that's in the air that's being illuminated by whatever source of light um you know is entering the uh, the scene okay so um you know to create continuity we need some of that same lightness okay or whiteness in this case okay so and where do you put this you put it in areas where that white in there meets dark okay now dark doesn't have to be you know, like a really dark area. It just has to means like a 5% or, you know what I mean? 1% or, or, or darker, okay? But in order to be able to see it, you do have to kind of utilize some of this in uh, those darker areas, okay? So let's take, for example, right here, this is where white meets dark, okay? And I'm just lightly dabbing right in there. And you can see this kind of glowing kind of diffusion um, in there, in that area. Um, you don't want to have a big glob of ink on here, otherwise you're going to go glob, glob, glob. Okay, you have to think about it in terms of, um, it's kind of more of like a, you have to think about it in terms of the spirit of it is like someone applying makeup or something like that um, to their face. Okay, I'm not talking about clowns and cold pack cream or something like that, but uh, makeup in terms of just a dry medium, okay? Um, that's kind of the spirit that you want of it. And look at that soft kind of glow around in there. Now, again, a lot of people think, oh my God, you make it look so easy. You have to do it in an easy process. If I have this big sopping wet glob of this, then it's going to make it for a harder process. But if you have less ink on here, you can go with like the worst possible technique of smashing this down like that and you know i got a little bit of glob right there but i don't have a huge amount okay but you just want to have kind of a you know a medium to dry um application of this medium and it goes on really easy what happens is though when people it's so dry on here that let's say I want to apply some right there and they go like this and people can't see it and they get really impatient. Then they go like, you know, they go like this or they go in here and apply a big glob of it and say, oh my God, it's so hard, you know? So just, uh, you know, the patience that you just need is you just need to wait like 
three seconds and you'll be able to see it or something like that but you know don't uh, think that it's uh, going to be easier or look better if it's like a half second process so you know it's it's really easy to do just make it into an easy process okay so the biggest thing that I always do it's kind of like a slower um, application of media so if I'm going for these blue tones in here I start off with a very light blue as my first color application you know what I mean so I start off light and I also apply you know when it's a certain type of medium I apply kind of a lighter amount of it colored pencils I go with a lighter touch when people say they have a heavy hand it's just that they just you know they're really impatient um, people don't have to have a heavy hand if you were applying something to a delicate piece of paper I don't think people are going to go like punch through it or something like that you know what I mean but they just get they just get uh, impatient with the uh, the process and then that makes for kind of a more precarious one you can do that you know if you want to go kind of you know really kind of you know what I mean uh, you know <laughs> it's you know it's more of a roller coaster ride you know if you kind of expedite everything and kind of speed it along or something like it. it'd be like um like german expressionism in artwork you know what i mean where you're getting these like bold types of um applications of media you know wood block cuts or something like that i mean that looks really cool but you want to be practiced in those uh, types of applications so that um it's not just a kind of absolutely uncontrolled application all right so see this right here see this kind of this um, glowing light that we have in here now and see how nice that looks that kind of glowing kind of illuminated mist like that um, looks against um, these sharper types of elements right here it makes for a really good um, textural um, contrast okay let's add a little bit let's okay now what i'm also doing is i'm kind of tapping it okay and i'm applying some in the lighter areas like that see this right here but then you tap and then you move a little bit that's what i'm doing when i'm applying color to it my blue tones black up here or something like that you're kind of tapping on the edge and then you kind of go okay in this case when i'm applying white i'm kind of tapping and then I'm moving outwards, okay, for inside out, tapping like this, and I'm going into that area like that. So it's not like this, this, this. It's more like tapping, and then you move it in. So when you're coloring darker tones, you're tapping, sponging, whatever your application you're using, and then you're kind of slowly moving it in like that so it transitions from dark to light. But when you were going from light to dark, you do the same thing. You're going from this type of thing you're getting kind of what you want then you're transitioning it outward like that okay all right so let's um take a look here okay now here's the one thing i wasn't quite sure of if i should apply that um white pigment ink in there before i stamp my um eagles okay now if i do do, do my eagles after then i can get that nice soft moon like that going if I had the eagles in there I'm going to be tapping over the eagles but now sometimes I want a little bit of this pigment ink on those eagle wings okay so it looks like they're a little bit more three-dimensional when you have the light hitting them in a certain way so here's what I'm thinking I, it, but the thing about that is I'm not quite sure if this is going to stamp on here really cleanly or not because I'm stamping over kind of this pigment ink that's already applied on there so I don't know I don't know if these eagles will stamp out um real um dark and black now I could use maybe a pigment ink or something like that or a I don't know versifying clear maybe but I'm just going to try my standard dye based ink right here okay now I've just kind of arranged my eagles my two eagles on this one block and I'll just stamp them like that down there these are the eagles from uh the nature set I really like the size of these um when I used them yesterday okay so I'm not gonna have these right both equally on the moon I'm gonna have one kind of on there and one kind of down here and I figured this area down here is light enough you know where this silhouette of this eagle is going to stand out but I want one of the eagles right over the moon 
We have two small images right here, so just apply it with um, kind of light, even pressure, or adequate even pressure. Doesn't it doesn't have to be too light. I just don't want to squash down these eagles, you know. Uh, they don't have really a super delicate area, but I just don't, you know, like around the, their heads or something like that, I don't want it to be a squashed impression. And I'm holding um, down a little bit longer because I'm stamping into a wet, um, white, uh, water-based pigment ink, okay? I should say that, you know, if I was doing, you can use, um, you know, like Hero Arts or whatever, you know, Hero Hues, um, Unicorn or something like that pigment ink, but those are where oil-based pigment inks, okay? So you might not get a good impression with a dye-based ink over the top of like a white oil-based pigment ink, Okay, so if I was doing these over the top of an oil-based pigment ink, you might want to use something like a stays-on ink. Something that I'll just stamp over anything, but water over oil might not um, transfer very well. Now, um, oil-based inks, pigment inks, have a reputation of not drying on top of a glossy cardstock. But when you just kind of... But when they're talking about that, they're talking about making an impression with a pigment ink on glossy cardstock because an impression is giving you a pretty thick application of ink. Like if I stamp this in like a VersaFine Clair on top of glossy, it might not dry. But when you're just kind of doing a light tapping of something like that, the amount of um, white pigment ink is so little and it's just a kind of a thin, almost like a, like I said, like a powdery coating of it that it will dry. I, I used to use um, Colorbox um, Frost White all the time, and it I never had a problem with it drying, okay? Okay, so anyways, that's what those eagles look like. Um, they didn't stamp out completely black in a couple areas, but I, I thought about maybe tapping some ink over the top of it, but where they, um, you know, didn't stamp out perfectly black, I think that looks pretty good, so it already looks like the the light is hitting it. It's because I stamped that wing on probably a top of uh, an area where there was a, you know, a little bit of a buildup of the white pigment ink underneath there. So, I don't know. So, I think that looks okay. Um, all right. Let's go like this, and let's bring in some of this white moonlight onto some of our forms down here. So right on top of this rock here, I'm doing some of that thing they call, what is that, lineless stamping or something like that? It's where you get rid of that top line in there. You can make your forms look a little bit more three-dimensional that way. Outlines in designs flatten an image out okay so if you want to go for the illusion of dimension you want to have as few lines in your artwork as possible that's why in mine sometimes i need a line to define something i try to have things in back of objects typically like trees in back of a cabin or something like that so i don't have to have so many outlines um, because they tend to flatten out you know, the imagery, like I was saying. Again, I'm going, I'm using a blue right here because the, I want the highlights in this rock to be a little bit um, darker than the highlights up here. That's a little bit too dark uh, or too light right here. So I'll just wipe it off. That's the beauty of um, glossy cardstock. You know, you can apply some media on there and if you don't get what you want, you know, it, with certain types of media, you can just wipe it off before it dries. Now the acrylic will dry on here just fine, but you know I, I did have um, a minute or two to uh, wipe off anything that I don't want or anything that I put on too much of. I can remove some of it. So I used white highlights right over here because that's in a stronger area of light. And in the darker areas, I can use um, you know a darker blue to represent. Um, lighting. I used to do it all with a white pen, but these days there's so many different, um, you know, like multi-packs of uh, acrylic pens and gel pens that you can really utilize um, different values of, uh, you know, whatever color you're working with. 
which is really nice because um, you can get a lot more variation that way. All right, so you can see these rocks down here kind of, you know, reflecting some of that light up here. Maybe I made some of it too a little too dotty looking, you know, kind of fill it in. I kind of did some stippling. I want some, some of that stippling on there, but I don't want it to look too uh, different in terms of it. The, you know, the textures. Okay, now we have our um, cactus in here, cacti, and I can have some of them kind of reflecting some of that light. This is a uh, really fun to add these little scratches back into our pieces if I was working on, um, you know, clayboard, you know, art tiles. But on this, I'll just use my pen to do an additive. Um, you know, illuminated uh, mark. I'm probably putting a little bit too much on it. We're getting a little carried away. It actually looks okay. And see this organ pipe cacti in front of the Ocotillo right here. Um, let's add in a little bit of a highlight like this on our, our organ pipe. And that'll create a little bit of a separation between that object right here and the background. Ocotillo's maybe a little bit. I don't know. It's really subtle. Maybe add some highlights on the tops. There's no kind of right or wrong. It's just, you know, you can put highlights wherever on these pieces. Generally, if, you know, like a moon is to the left of, you know, some sort of object on the right hand side, I'll be, put the most of the highlights on the left side. But it doesn't mean like that, that moon is there. It doesn't mean that there isn't going to be a highlight right in here. You know what I mean? Um, you know, because light bounces off things and reflects. So um, if you ever get confused, you, what you do is you just kind of do kind of a minimal application of your media, you know, in this case, like for example, you know, you can put a couple little dots here, a little, you know, blue mark on this area right here. And it's like, okay, does that make that rock stand out too much? Or maybe not at all, okay? So I don't think it, it did really much of anything. So you can go lighter in this case, you know, with something more extreme. And then you can add this one in here. And that white stands out a little bit more. So again, you can kind of just take it slow. You can add something that isn't going to influence that area at too much. And then if you like it, and if you think it needs a little bit more, then you add something else. So in this case, it's going with a you know lighter kind of highlight. Here, I think this white looks pretty good on here. It didn't look good over the whole thing. But I just did a small batch. So right in here, that blue highlight went like all over that. But then I just put that little white one. Like let's say here, I'll put it right here too. I'll just put a little bit of the white right there. So it's that highlight kind of transitions from lighter to darker down here. White and then blue highlight like that. Okay, so um, let's see here. This is a blue tone scene, nighttime scene. So um, let's go and add some shadows at the base of some of these rocks. Maybe this one's a little bit too dark. Eh, it's not too dark for over here, I think. In our illuminated areas, right over here where it gets a little bit lighter. Maybe I'll use a lighter um, shadow or, you know, lighter blue. Okay, so here adding down these little blue shadows right in here. And then what I do is I go with that darker blue before, and I'll go with a little bit of a lighter blue right here and just kind of blend out that darker shadow or mark like that, okay? Let's do something fun here. <clears throat> Let's add in <clears throat> a little bit of, 
warmth in here on my rocks. I can't really see too much of anything if I did anything at all. It's like super subtle. But remember, if you're doing something different and you wanted to see what it looks like, do something very subtle. In this case, I can't see anything at all. Okay. So that was this color right here. Okay. It's kind of a peachish tone. Uh, this one right here looks a little bit darker. So see what I mean? I always just take it and I just, oh, this one's like, uh, this one's had it. Some of my pens have had it. I'll just toss this one out. Okay, here's a bit of a, you know, this one's maybe too much, but um, eh, that's a little bit too much. See, I'm a little bit chicken about that. It's a little bit too warm and yellowish, but here's a, here's a little brownish tinge right here. And I'm just coloring it, coloring it where the rocks are kind of black anyway. And I'm just kind of blending, you know, kind of coming out with that a little bit. Or going up into a lighter area where I'll be able to see this. But I'm not going into white, I'm kind of going into the darker areas. So uh, let's add it down in some of these rocks here too. So what this is doing is it's just kind of adding like a little brownish gray warmth into those rocks. I don't know if you see it right there, but it's just a little bit different now. I mean, I'm not coloring it through this whole area. I'm just kind of adding it in a couple little areas here. Um, not that it needs it or anything like that either, but I think it just kind of tweaks it just a very small amount. And I thought that looked okay. Um, all right, now here's my question um, that I have myself is um, I'm wondering about, uh, let me see something here. Let me see if I have any um, of my silver ink at all. My silver ink was kind of like whipped and my re-inker for it was uh, completely um, separated, um, a brand new one too. I guess so you can't let that, um, some reinker metallic fluid, uh, pigment ink sitting around for too long. Okay. Let me see. I have a little gold on here, which I don't want, but let me see if I have any of this starlight silver left at all. Like I said, it was pretty dry. Let me see right here. I do have Platinum Planet. Yeah, this looks pretty dry right here. The metallic um, pigment inks are really dry fast. Yeah, not all brilliance inks are the same, in other words. Um, they're very different in terms of consistency from, you know, metallic to one of the colors like white. Okay. Okay, was that going to stand out at all? I don't know. Let me do a test print here. I'll do it on a piece of foil. I don't know if this is enough um, darkness up here either. It might not stand out. It doesn't look too bad. It almost looks... um. It kind of looks, uh, it almost looks white on this type of thing. It'll dry on there. I can let it dry, but you can just, you know, you just wipe it off too. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is going to stand out um, or stand out enough, like right there. I might be able to get it in there though. I mean, go down here too, and, but I think that'd be a little bit awkward. I'm trying to throw this right here in the upper corner. I'm going a little bit closer to the edge than I normally would want to. Um, let's see how it goes though. I hope I wasn't working off screen there. Boy, I was zoomed in quite a bit. Sorry about that if I, if I was. All right, now I'm really good allowing this to uh, transfer over here. Yeah, 
it's not going to completely dry before I lift this. I'm not going to sit there and hold this down for 15 minutes or something like that. But, um, you know, maybe 60 seconds or something like that, at least. Okay. I think that came out okay. The end, yeah, it's a little bit obscure because it's not very dark back here where that cloud is. But I think it, but I think it was enough there. See, like that dream, like that. It's pretty subtle too, like that. I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so this one's going to be um, spray sealed. And then we'll mount it up. We'll put a little bit of silver border around there and hope it looks um, nice and elegant. And we'll see how that looks. So um, the dream just needs to dry a little bit more. You know, what we're talking about, like a minute or two. And I'll spray seal this. I've been spraying mine with a spray fix just because it dries like instantly, you know. But this one would look pretty good with a UV resistant clear or a triple thick or something like that, you know, because this is already on glossy cardstock. Um, the thicker slays might make the saturation a little bit more extreme, you know. The spray, the spray fix does a pretty good job of that too, but um, you know, it is 1.09 a.m. here where I am, so I don't want to wait around too long for this to dry. And then we'll get it mounted up, so a little bit of a couple layers to uh, add to this, and it should be finished. All right. <clears throat> we have our finished piece here. We have it on our silver reflective card stock and let's see if you can see this but um you know the surface is pretty um shiny and glossy with the additional acrylic sealant on here i think our colors um kind of got a little bit more saturated you can see it get you know you can see the colors change when you're spray sealing um these pieces you know when that acrylic is laying down on there the contrast um, gets a little bit more extreme. Everything just gets darker or more saturated and vibrant. Um, you know, when, it, when we're spraying um, dye-based inks, if we're spraying something like, you know, like colored pencils or pastels or something like that, probably not. Um, but um, as far as the transparent media, um, it does get a little bit more... Um, Oh, like I said, vibrant and uh, saturated. And, you know, if you've layered um, colors, um, the depth of those um, layered um, transparent tones really comes into, uh, I don't know, uh, comes into its potential. It looks like a freshly stamped piece, you know, when it was still wet. Um, the colors are most the most vibrant um, when you do it that way. But if you spray seal your pieces, um, it'll kind of retain that look. Um, from then on, it won't kind of get dry, dull, or something like that. Um, and I'm pretty convinced, but I hardly ever do it. Um, sometimes I'm convinced that if you spray seal it kind of before it dries, I think that's the best um, retention of um, color saturations rather than allowing it to dry and then spray sealing it. Sometimes you spray seal it after it's been allowed to dry for too long. And it looks like, oh, there's the saturation again. But then the acrylic dries sometimes, and it's like, eh, it lost some of the vibrancy again. So, you know, if you spray seal it within a, like an hour or two after you've created these pieces, it's probably for the best. Okay, but anyways, it looks pretty good even if you, you know, whenever you spray seal it. And sometimes I've waited, you know, a really long time, and you can really see the difference on my, uh, some of my spray sealing videos. Okay, but anyways, we have that dream right up there. I, I think, think these little quotes kind of, or word stamps kind of finish these pieces off really nicely. But our focal points right in there, the word stamp is kind of a, I don't know, it's, it's a little bit, of, it's a minimal um, type of focal point, but people do read, you know, if there's words anywhere in a piece. Um, they'll always read it. Their eye will always go to it. Probably they'll read it once, then they'll probably, you know, not go to it ever again. But um, anyways, little highlights here and there, kind of minimal types of little touches on here. I, I, I don't know if I'd call, you know, the, um, the process of adding all that um, white pigment ink in there minimal. I mean, it creates a pretty big 
um, it makes a pretty big textural statement. You know, everything in here looks a lot softer, but it doesn't look like a big addition. You know, when we're talking about just a really light layer of something, you know, I don't think someone's going to look at this and look at those clouds and say, oh my God, you know, how dramatic that is. It's just kind of a more of a soothing type of look, but there was a pretty decent amount of, um, you know, very thin um, applications of that uh, white pigment ink in there. So, um, I don't know. I'd recommend giving it a shot. Remember, you always kind of just dab off quite a lot where like a couple taps really doesn't do anything, but it's only through about 15 taps or so that you really start to build it up. And 15 taps to 20 taps, we're talking about like five seconds or something like that. So it's really minimal as you're tapping in one area and try to work one little area first. Okay. And I remember you just have to do it with a dry applicator. So if I, if I'm doing it around, you know, doing it around like little glowing stars or something like that on a Q-tip, you really have to take a lot of that ink off and try to go with a soft, you know, applicator. So on a, like a Q-tip, you know, you want to kind of, um, see this right here, how kind of unwound it is. So I've kind of taken it and I've kind of smushed it down and kind of softened it up on the tip right here. Here's a, you know, time when I was using black on there or something like that. But 100% um, cotton on both of these two. It's not the acrylic types. The acrylic types don't work for me at all. So just go for a really soft um, applicator and then a really soft application of those types of inks that you're applying on there. Okay. And... Um, it'll kind of extend out the application time and therefore you'll have a lot more control over it, you know, rather than going with a really wet one and just touching it down like that and it leaves a big blob, okay? So think about it when you're doing this type of, um, these types of little touches like that. Think about it like in the spirit of adding like a, like a powder or something like that to uh, these pieces because that's what you want it to look like. You want it to look like a really light kind of a misty type of application and mist is very fine you know it's just suspended in the air you can even see it unless light is hitting it so um yeah so you don't want to like real wet applications okay okay i think i made that point a gazillion times it's like i used to do that in my workshops all the time just to remind people you know <laughs> okay thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the piece and thanks as always for tuning into the Stampscapes channel.